Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sora. Um, I, it's my uh, honor to uh, the, present this particular topic here uh, in front of you uh, and the audience. Um, can you see my slides, please? Are my slides visible? Yes, sir, your slides are visible. Okay. Just give me a moment. I'll just have a pointer option. Okay. Um, so in the next 20 minutes, I'll uh, illustrate this important topic, which is uh, actually very, very important as far as the Indian population is concerned. Non-obese lean patient with diabetes. Now, there's something which uh, people outside the country, Western countries, don't see very often. So here on the left side, you see two mice. One is the obese one and one is the lean one. And this will uh, remain as the backdrop of my presentation. A little bit of background definition and questions. Uh, in several parts of India and in clinical practice, many Indian patients with diabetes are non-obese or lean. Uh, we are going to focus on non-type 1 and non-elderly patients here. A number of confusing names have been uh, introduced, malnutrition-related diabetes, protein-deficient pancreatic diabetes, Jamaica type, type diabetes, J-type diabetes, M-type DM, type 3 DM. But overlapping categories were first lumped together by MMS Ahuja, and experimental evidence was provided by GS Bajaj. And so the name given at that point, a particular point of time, around four decades back, was ketosis-resistant diabetes of the young, these patients had a very high fasting blood glucose, onset of diabetes less than 30 years, uh, the BMI, which was very low, they belonged to poor socioeconomic strata, had childhood malnutrition, and insulin requirement was very high. This was initial presentation of this type of diabetes. Now, there are confusion uh, reigns as far as terminology for non obese as far as lean is concerned, who's lean, who's non-obese. So here are the definitions. Lean is BMI less than 18.5 or 19 kg per meter square. And non-obese is between 19 to 24.9 kg per meter square. And we shall refer to this lean and non-obese throughout our presentation. Now, etiopathogenesis of such non-obese patients with diabetes is ill understood and possibly heterogeneous as I shall uh, illustrate in the presentation. Uh, and it is widely believed that non-obese patients with type 2 diabetes have greater insulin secretory defect or some other pathophysiology. Now, uh, there are lingering questions and doubt. Non-obese patients, are they actually non-obese or they have high body fat and ectopic fat, liver fat, for example? Are they, though non-obese, have insulin resistance? What about the glucagon? Lean patient, they, do they have decreased insulin secretion or beta cell function? Why? And is there a hepatic metabolic dysfunction? Other causes, fibrocalculus pancreatic diabetes, lipodystrophies, LADA being missed in our patient, the masquerading as type 2 diabetes, and how to diagnose genetically determined diabetes. And how to approach such, such patient, same approach as obese patient, use of metformin, use of sulfonylurea, early insulinization. Now, I shall cover briefly these topics in my presentation. Now, let's look at uh, prevalence of lean, non-obese patient with diabetes. And this is one of the best studies by Dr. Mohan. Uh, they classified lean as less than 18.5 kg per meter square BMI, which I showed you earlier. In the uh, cohort of patients that they studied, only 3.5 Look at this, 3.57% of the patients were lean. But lean patients had more severe hyperglycemia, more retinopathy, neuropathy, nephropathy, and 50% of them were controlled on OHA and 50% on insulin therapy. Subsequently, we published in 2003 a hospital-based study where we studied the body composition of uh, patient with type 2 diabetes coming to all India Institute of Medical Sciences. And look at that. Even there in the hospital based study, we had 30% of the patient who had a BMI of less than 23, 28% had BMI less than 25, and we studied their body fat. Uh, around 22% had normal body fat. So even two decades back, even hospital based patient, there were plenty of patients who were non obese and some were lean. 
in a well characterized cohort of patient, uh, 75 patients with a mean age of 28.9. So they were fairly young patients. And a BMI, look at the BMI. They were uh, they were lower lower uh, spectrum of BMI of non-obese and some were lean. 69% had type 2 diabetes. So even in these non-obese and lean patients, 69% had type 2 diabetes. 31% had autoantibody positive or presented with ketoacidosis. And in those patients who had type 2 diabetes, HOMA IR were high. So meaning thereby that in this cohort of patients, non-obese patients, lean patients, uh, the insulin resistance was high. Let's look at the differential diagnosis. This uh, list the differential diagnosis. Uh, so a non-obese or lean patient could be having a true type 2 diabetes. So BMI could be 19 to 24.9 or lean, they may be lean. So both of categories may belong to type 2 diabetes or they may be having autoimmunity. Now we are not going to talk about type 1 diabetes, but LADA, late onset autoimmune diabetes may be present. And genetically modulated diabetes, among them, the foremost is uh, maturity onset diabetes of young, then mitochondrial mutation, lipodystrophy, and some unknown mutation. And uh, the entity which I initially described, this, which was described by Professor MMS Ahuja and Dr. J.S. Bajaj, malnutrition modulated diabetes mellitus, which actually was listed in the diagnostic criteria for diabetes earlier, is possibly not well characterized anymore. And the research is not very proper on this particular entity. Now, this is one of the first studies on heterogeneous etiologies of apparent, apparent type 2 diabetes in young people. Now, the, the, pe the patients here belong to 18 to 45 years of age, 268 patients. And look at this, what they found. They found familial partial lipodystrophy. It was just one patient, rare. 26 patients with LADA. So it is less uh, rare, but may be overlooked in adults. One, uh, no patient with Modi here in, in general uh, investigation. And two patients with mitochondrial variant of diabetes. And when they looked at the uh, Modi carefully, in patients who lacked insulin resistant features, then they, were, they found two patients with Modi. Ever, very interestingly, the average BMI of genetically based diabetes was less than 25, and antibody positive diabetes, they were slightly obese in this particular study. So, this is a UK study, and let's uh, see the uh, study from India. This is again a well characterized cohort from uh, Lucknow, Dr. Ish Bhatia's group. Uh, they looked at 105 patients, age of onset of diabetes, fairly young, 18 to 35 years of age. And what they found was 40% each of type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. And rest, 20%, 15% is fibrocalculus pancreatic diabetes and 5% belong to heterogeneous other etiologies like Modi, uh, mitochondrial diabetes and flatbush diabetes. Uh, let's look at each entity separately. This is LADA. This is onset uh, at around 30 to 35 years of age with initial in insulin independence. And they have presence of antibodies, BMI less than 25, and personal or family history of autoimmune disease. So though the factors which may incite remain the same as for type 2 diabetes, excessive weight, uh, smoking, physical activ activity, uh, inactivity, uh, etc. But most important is the genetic susceptibility, islet cell autoimmunity, and then subsequently insulin deficiency. And they slowly progress to insulin dependence. The fibrocalculus pancreatic diabetes, which is, uh, uh, if you remember, was found in 15% of the cohort of patients from North India, uh, these patients have recurrent abdominal pain. And you can see the calculi right here, pancreatic calculi. Uh, they are present in the lean adolescent or young males. Uh, they have pain abdomen and steatoria, 
and there is a possible genetic link. Spink one is the gene which has been investigated. Their diabetes is brittle. They require insulin, though they may have low C peptide. There is no ketosis, and rarely on the right side you see uh, the pancreatic cancer being reported from India in one of the patients with fibrocalculus pancreatic diabetes. So you must have the plain X-ray done in any patient with abdominal pain and diabetes and look at the pancreatic calcification. Modi is a huge subject by itself, but briefly, it is genetically and clinically heterogeneous subgroup of diabetes characterized by early onset of diabetes, usually before 25 years. Uh, obesity and ketosis are uncommon. Autosomal dominant, this is the most important uh, inheritance, and primary defect is in beta cell function, 14 monogenic mutations have been identified. Amongst them, HNS, H, HNF1 alpha is the most common and uh, HNF alpha subtype and HNF4 A subtype are very sensitive to effect of sulfonylurea. So this is something which needs to be looked into and some of our patients which we actually treat as type 2 diabetes may belong to this particular diagnostic category. Now, this is uh, a particularly um, interesting subject and uh, very close to my heart because we have investigated this when I was in USA, familial partial dystrophy, which is again an autosomal dominant syndrome. And if you see here, the excess fat deposition around the neck, and if you see the MRI of neck of uh, this patient, full of fat versus MRI neck of a normal person. And there is uh, the lipo atrophy of the limb and abdomen. So there's hardly any fat here in this particular area and excess fat in the neck. Onset of diabetes is before 20 years of age and associated multi-system dystrophy and mutation is that of LMNA. And there are multiple variants of this particular syndrome. For example, this is one such study which shows that in 5,221 patients, one patient was found with mutation in PPR gamma now, this is another variant of familial partial lipodystrophy. This uh, combination, these authors said that combination of BMI of less than 27 and high insulin requirement, uh, if such a combination is occurring, the chances of finding lipodystrophy is high. Now, a rare uh, syndrome, mitochondrial mutation, maternally inherited diabetes with deafness. Now, look at this. This is the locus here. And if the mother carries one gene, then the children may carry. Early onset of diabetes with impaired hearing before diabetes, lower the BMI, more severe disease with a rapid progression of insulin risk, uh, uh, dependence and phenotypic heterogeneity with the mutation in this particular uh, locus. This is the mutation. Uh, this is something which I was talking about is not very well characterized and probably less talked about recently. Uh, there's a history of uh, malnutrition. Patient may require high doses of insulin. And even then, they, their leanness may not be corrected. And they may have infections, skin, soft tissue, pulmonary tuberculosis, and micro and macro vascular complications are rare. So you see, this publication is from 2002. And subsequently, recently, it has not been well investigated. Now, phenotype of lean patient with uh, a tip, uh, 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 type 2 diabetes. So we have till now talked about various other phenotypes and syndromes of apparent type 2 diabetes, but their etiology lies elsewhere. Here are the patients with type 2 diabetes. Now, they may be truly lean patient with type 2 diabetes. The phenotype is only partially characterized they don't have protein deficiency or low socioeconomic strata, do not have autoimmunity. They have hyperglycemia with normal C-peptide levels and low insulin levels. And the authors have said that possibly hepatic uh, extraction of insulin. They present with infections, peripheral neuropathy, macrovascular disease uh, less common and sulfonylurea usually lead to good response. So again, the, this is something which needs further research. Now, non-obese patient, Asian Indians with and without diabetes, this is, this is a phenotype which is commonly encountered. Now, this phenotype is 
can be seen in non-diabetic people. This is one such study where Asian Indians, which were young Asian Indians with a, a non-obese BMI, they were investigated and compared with Caucasians. And look at this, their phenotype showed markedly high fatty acid, free fatty acid, low adiponectin, inflammatory markers, high liver and muscle triglyceride. So this is the typical phenotype of a young Asian Indian, which develops into diabetes. And we have compared the young patients, uh, non-obese patients, which are recently diagnosed to be having type 2 diabetes with non-diabetic control and found a high amount of total abdominal fat. Look at this fat versus this. And also liver span is high, indicating high liver fat. This we published some time back. For the, so in such patients who are who have BMI less than 25, further weight loss is required, although their BMI may be in normal or upper limit of normal. Now, the same phenotype was further characterized by us, and we found that this these non-obese patients, as compared to non-diabetic controls, had a marked, marked insulin resistance and high C-peptide levels. And also, Apart from high insulin levels, high OMA IR, their fasting glucagon levels were high and correlated with multiple measures of abdominal obesity. So, non-obese patient, high body fat, uh, high abdominal fat, high liver fat, high glucagon, high insulin, and high OMA IR. In the same cohort of patients, the circulating DPP-4 levels were also higher then controls. And you, we all know that the circulating DPP-4 levels are injurious to a multiple organ system cause inflammation, insulin resistance, and also injurious to liver. There may be other pathways to diabetes in lean and non-obese individuals, especially Indian population. One pathway is through endocannabinoid receptor. Now, endocannabinoid receptors reside in the hypothalamus and cannabis acts on these receptors and they are blocked by remunerment. And the obesity and nicotine cause overactivity of endocannabinoid receptor, which may lead to increase in the food intake, obesity, insulin resistance, and this is blocked by remunerment. Now, remunerment has been banned due to various reasons, but this is a pathway to insulin resistance, which may occur in lean patients. And there is one evidence which exists that there is a high activity of endocannabinoid system in healthy, lean Asian Indians. And look at this, as compared to Caucasians, and such patients may respond well uh, to any ACS blocker, which may lead to less of insulin resistance. Similarly, if you look at brown adipose tissue, which is linked to obesity, insulin resistance, the higher the brown adipose tissue, the less is the insulin resistance and obesity. Uh, look at this on the left side is the image of the brown adipose tissue on FTG PET uh, on cold stress mice. So this is a very small bit of uh, adipose tissue, not much is uh, found in human beings. Uh, when South Asians were compared to white Caucasians, the white Caucasians had more of total bat volume, meaning that thereby they have more of energy expenditure and they be more lean or insulin sensitive as compared to Asian. So endocannabinoid system and brown adipose tissue needs more investigation as far as Indian population is concerned. Now, final two slides, uh, very briefly, the management approach to diagnosis. So uh, when you encounter a non-obese young adult patient with diabetes, if patient is lean, less than or equal to 19 BMI, then it could be young type 1 diabetes. And a star indicates family history may be or genetically determined or family history is present. Or patient may be truly lean type 2 diabetes or type 2 diabetes who has malnutrition or chronic disease of some type or chronic calcific pancreatitis or SCPD with malabsorption. So these people can be truly lean. And when the patient is uh, having a BMI between 19 to 25, it could be type 2 diabetes. 
it could be lada again the black stars indicate either genetic determination or family history lipodystrophies or genetically modulated diabetes like modi or maternally uh, maternal maternal diabetes with deafness now general approach to treatment i cannot be more detailed because of lack of time but again similar diagram patient who's lean or uh, has a bmi 19 or less young type 1 obviously insulin lean type 2 or type 2 with malnutrition either sulfonylurea insulin pyridoxone or tpp4 inhibitors chronic calcific pancreatitis or fcpd with malabsorption insulin is the something we should be given otherwise some people may respond to metformin pyridoxone but certainly because of pancreatitis dpp4 inhibitors should not be given and a patient who who has a bmi between 19 and 25 a typical type 2 diabetes which will respond to multiple drugs including sglt2 inhibitors and i would uh, i would uh, request all of you to put any patient who has a bmi of 23 24 upper limit on sglt2 inhibitor for them to benefit as far as their liver fat and total fat is concerned lada metformin dpp4 and insulin modi some may respond to sulfonylurea diet and some to insulin lipodystrophy pyridoxone metformin metrolepsin high dose insulin and sglt2 inhibitors recently have been tried and glp1 receptor and So with that, I finish my presentation. I thank uh, Dr. Banshi Chabu and his team for inviting me uh, to present these data in front of you. Thank you.